came from uh, my desire to write a love story. And um, this world of R&B and hip hop music world really uh, interested me just because of what uh, has been going on with women, especially in the industry. Um, and it was really marrying those two together and the inspiration for the actual film came when I was at an Alicia Keys concert uh, and she was singing a song called Diary and uh, it was just one of those great moments as a writer where the, the story just comes into your head and it was really like that the song was fueling all these thoughts and and so it was really being able to go home and then put this the story together of this woman just struggling to find herself and find her voice. Uh, my manager sent me the script I think around 2011 and then it was called Blackbird and um, I remember reading it uh, it was a, around the time that I, I would, that was the premiere of my first movie here, Larry Crown, and, and I remember just sort of my parents, it was the premiere and my parents were here I, or in LA and I was just flicking through the script and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And I sort of, and I had to go and do something else, but I just, I couldn't put it down. And, and um, I just thought it was such a, a unique perspective on the music industry because it really sort of um, showed you the, the, the underbelly of it and, it and it also showed you a sort of intimate portrait as opposed to just kind of fostering to the glamour you actually got to see behind the scenes of that. Um, and I love the fact that it was so uplifting, you know, and, and, and the end is, is, is really inspiring to me. For me, um, Gina was the biggest draw. Um, we worked together on Bees, which was here a few years ago, and I remember asking her after um, everything calmed down for Bees, what do you have next? And she's like, you know, I'm about to start this thing. And that literally was the first time I'd heard of it. And uh, we kept in touch, you know, over the years we've become great friends, our families. And, uh, and then there was a script. She asked me one time to come in and read, and I met Gugu completely separate, not knowing I'd even be a part of it. And then, uh, then I got the call asking me if, uh, if I'd be interested in doing it, and Gina knows. Anything she asks me, I'm going to say yes, you know. And probably before I read the script, I just trust her that much. She's a visionary, and I believe she's a genius. Um, she takes her time, and uh, she doesn't compromise, and she's a truth seeker. So it, it makes it, it made it for me really easy to say yes. Yeah, Minnie, a gift to the film. And uh, yeah, it made it exciting to be able to go to someone like Minnie Driver to play yeah. Noni's mom. I also think it also raised the stakes, the fact that you know we were as a mother and daughter sort of a duo uh, you know foreigners and you know I, I think it sort of just made it that much more you know all or nothing really you know in terms of coming to LA and Noni's trajectory the fact that they'd come all the way from London they'd already been through so much so I think it sort of gave it another dimension. I think it's it's important to note that who you project on the screen it's not necessarily who you are in real life um, it's a different kind of um, lifestyle like for me I'm like super family oriented and I'd rather be home most of the time you know what I mean and when I have to go out I'll, I'll go but it's with, with anyone and with anyone's life it's hard to, to understand what their life is the adversity they face on a day-to-day -day basis until you see it and I think that's the beauty in this film is that it, re it reminds you that fame is not always what it's cracked up to be like sometimes to escape fame is, is a feat in itself you know because sometimes you just want to be you you want to be able to relax and you don't want to have to be on you know I think a lot of people don't really understand um, how hard it is sometimes to just be on when you're sick you can have the flu but if I'm here sitting here you got to be on so it's a job you know it's a, it's a business and uh, it's, I think it works best when it has an off switch yeah I would say one of the most interesting things to, to push on to Google for her character was the thought of never being able to be off and like no matter where you go someone is always watching and one of the things that we did uh, to, to really push that for both of them we did a live improv where the two of them went to uh, the Aroma Cafe mm -hmm. uh, on a date Noni and Kaz and in character in character and uh, in they costume. didn't costume <laughs> in costume and character uh, they didn't know what to expect and I actually hired ended up being 30 people to play paparazzi and they Felt just like started 200 <laughs> They just started showing up, first asking for autographs, and then suddenly just a barrage of people taking pictures. And, and Nate is Kaz, learning how can he protect her. And, and Gugu is Noni, what is that when you have this onslaught and you have to live with that and them trying to escape and go in the restaurant and the people in the restaurant, what is going on and who is that? And it was, it was uh, you know, a way to give them that, that sense of what, what Noni and Kaz would really go through.